What is going on guys? In this video, we are going to cover three reasons why you might want to consider breeding lemon frost leopard geckos. Let's go. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. So reason number one, the reason why everybody loves these geckos, I mean everybody, like I was showing my geckos to a dollar store cashier the other day, and the one gecko that she picks out first is the lemon frost. The reason is, is because they're an overall more outstandingly bright gecko. They also have these really, really beautiful enhanced whitened eyes that give it just a very different look than a regular leopard gecko. Now this is not a scientific breakdown video of why the lemon frost looks the way it is. That video will come in the future. But for the purposes of reason number one, people love the look of lemon frost. If you were to peruse over the Asian and European markets, especially in Asia, they have competitions for best looking geckos, best looking monitors, best looking snakes, and somebody for every region will win. Well, I saw a picture this last year of a bold stripe lemon frost, leopard gecko that won and the gecko looked amazing. So reason number one, the geckos look fantastic. And that's what draws people in and grabs their attention on the forefront. Reason number two, if you're unaware of what goes on with the lemon frost leopard gecko, they do have health issues attached to their stigma. Skin tumors in a high percentage of geckos studied have been known to show and grow on the animals and in some worst cases, unfortunately spread to other muscles, tissues, and organs. Now, interestingly enough, the scientific lab that studied the spread of the cancer found out that lemon frost containing one copy of the lemon frost gene were the ones that were known to have bulbous tumors, whereas lemon frosts that were known to have two copies of the lemon frost gene were not known to have bulbous tumors, but were known to have metastasized tumors, which means that the skin tumor picked up and moved in the body to another location, thus creating the potential for a problem. Again, not every tumor is life-threatening, not every tumor causes a problem or an issue, but they definitely can, and we know that in the human world. So reason number two for lemon frost leopard geckos being a good candidate for breeding is because they're actually helping to further our understanding of the relationship between cancerous cells and the human body so that we could potentially learn how to fight cancer better in human beings. Now, not every lemon frost leopard gecko is gonna make it into these studies, so I do believe that a sort of responsible, controlled breeding aspect should be pursued when it comes to studying this mutation, but the mutation has already proven to be beneficial to better understanding cancer in animals and humans, and therefore I think that that whole hold some merit as far as cancer research is concerned for human beings. Now, reason number three, not everything is known about the mutation of the lemon frost leopard gecko. There was a really great study done, but the study was only conducted in a span of about two to three years. It's a little unclear how long they actually studied the geckos. Over 900 geckos were claimed to be produced in that two to three year period, which is a little suspicious. I'm gonna do a whole video on my thoughts of the scientific review that was done and I'm gonna go paragraph by paragraph with you through the paper so that we can both gain a better understanding and see what the results were of this study. But for now, just know that vast numbers of these geckos were studied and although a lot of the bigger breeders in the hobby want to tell you that we have a clear understanding of what's going on, one of the opening lines of the scientific article states, and I paraphrase, quote, the location that we believe we found to be causing the lemon frost mutation and the tumors is a good candidate for what we believe the reasons to be of why this gecko's DNA is defective. So all throughout the paper, they use these terminologies, we think, we might, we are considering, so the whole paper really boiled down to 
a theory that they put together based off of a short period of time and a relatively small group of animals in comparison to all the different DNA studies that could have been done. And it even says it at the very end of the paper, it says further research must continue. So there are breeders out there that are breeding lemon frost into wilder type bloodlines and studying the results to see what happens so that these geckos can be potentially donated to the lab and studied for further understanding. John from Gecko Boa stated in one of his last live streams that he believes the white and yellow gene, which is known to have neurological, which is brain issues, causing the geckos to spin around in circles and just not be that productive. He mentioned that he thinks that there are multiple genes at play causing for that effect because he'll have some white and yellows that have it, others that don't, and therefore he believes that there's other genes in play that are on or off and causing for enhanced versions of white and yellow syndrome, mild versions, or no versions at all. And so my statement about the lemon frost is the same exact thing could be happening. In the scientific paper, which we will go through in detail in another study, they found many errors of code in the lemon frost gecko's DNA. Each one of those areas of error could be partially contributing to the one area that they believe is the most impactful and the highest candidate for what's causing the gecko to look this way, but also for the gecko to break out with its health issues. Did I say reason number three already? I don't know. So in summary of reason number three, we've seen white and yellow has problems at one genetic location. Enigma has problems at one genetic location. Tangerine and Black Knight and other inbred leopard gecko lines have problems at multiple locations in their DNA. But as you outcross, clean lines of these mutations can be attained. And so we're hoping the same thing can be done with lemon frost. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, I really, really applaud you. I think a lot of people want to know about the lemon frost leopard gecko. I did a poll recently where 89% of the people that voted in the poll wanted to learn more about the lemon frost mutation. And so that encouraged me to do a whole series on lemon frost just so that the hobby can know more as a whole. You know, even the Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. What a great saying. I think in some cases, too much knowledge Knowledge can hurt, but we're all adults here. We all have the ability to make our own decisions. The problem is when no information is being shared or only one side of the information is being shared, then people can't make an educated judgment call. So all I would like to do in this Lemon Frost series is put out a bunch of information out there, talk about the Lemon Frost so people are aware of it, number one, because it does exist in the hobby and people can be careful of it, number two. Before everyone jumps all over my case, I am not promoting or advocating for the irresponsible high production of lemon frost leopard geckos in the hobby. A matter of fact, I would suggest you don't breed lemon frost because you are absolutely going to encounter tumorous skin issues. In the scientific research study that was done, out of 900 geckos, over 80% of them develop tumorous skin tissue problems. What I'm curious about is the other 20%, why they didn't and what other genes were interacting and in play there, turned on and turned off, that prevented the animals from having an overproduction of cells, which is basically cancer. So I think just like the research paper states, more research does need to be conducted. Now this is a fasciolatus generation one lemon frost outcross. So it has some Turkmenicus blood, Macularis blood, as well as Fasciolatus blood in it. I don't know if this is going to be a thing, but in the Fascius blood generation one so far, out of all the geckos we have, we're not seeing any outward displays of tumors. So if this proves to hold true and be a cure for the lemon frost issue, then we will definitely be donating a lot of geckos, hopefully back to the same lab so that they can find out why these geckos are not expressing tumors in relationship to their counterpart subspecies macularis geckos that were done in the original study. Now, one last point to point out that I'm very interested in. Enigma, white and yellow, and hyperxanthic, which is bright yellow leopard geckos, they all have a brightened sense of skin tone. Lemon frost has a brightened sense of skin tone, but that's because of an overproduction of white reflected skin cells that wind up making the gecko brighter as a whole. 
I'm curious if white and yellow hyperxanthic and enigma leopard geckos have an overproduction of those same skin cells, but they don't have the cancer issue. So that could be another in-depth look into certain genes in the gecko's DNA that are turned on and turned off that actually cause for an overproduction of these cells, which is basically irregular or defective cells is cancer. And so that's what's going on in the lemon frost leopard gecko or at least 80% of them. But what's going on in the other 20% really needs to be studied more. So what'd you think about this video, guys? I know it's a little bit of a controversial topic, but I love to talk about all topics in the hobby. I think we should, as a community, talk about all topics in the hobby. I don't want just my voice to be heard on this matter. I would like other people to chime in as well and for all of us to get together and talk because that's how the hobby grows. I think that's the direction that our hobby is going. I'm starting to see a lot more collaboration. Even when people start talking about the information that we're talking about, at least that's a step in the direction of at least talking things over with each other. You know, just because we disagree or just because we're on opposite sides of a issue does not mean that we can't have a conversation about it, present both sides and allow for people to make their own choices. And that's the side that I'm really on. So thank you guys for being along in this video. I don't have a name for this little one yet, but this is a generation one fasciolatus cross that has Turkmenicus blood, macularis blood, and the lemon frost mutation in there showing no brightness of skin, no over production of cells and a few of this one's siblings are showing the same thing which is rare because most geckos do show bright patches of skin whereas the fasciolatus are not so thank you guys more to come on this topic i will look for you in the next video and until then have a geeky gecko great day peace